and welcome back to another episode of the Employee to Boss podcast. I am your host, Haley Hayhurst, the owner of Espresso Podcast Production, a full-service podcast agency specializing in editing, marketing, and strategy. So today I am repurposing a live that I recently did on Instagram onto here because it was so valuable and I want to share it in more places. And so today's episode ironically, is about how to repurpose old podcast episodes. So this is episode 81 of the Employee to Boss podcast. And so thinking about where I started and where I'm at now, there is a lot of difference. But those first episodes have so much value, right? Episode one, I remember recording, I was so nervous because I had the founders of Females Who Side Hustle, Terry and Sarah on, and that episode is just so awesome because it just talks about so much entrepreneurship and the journey and kind of the imposter syndrome we cover a lot. The second one that I ever did with Beate, we talked about how to turn your passion into profit. Then the third episode I ever had on my podcast was with the podcast lawyer, Gordon Firemark. And so we talked about trademark contracts and protecting your assets and intellectual property. And these are like all things that from episode one to 80, there's so much value and so many different topics that I cover. So the reason that I went live and you're about to hear that is I want to promote all of these episodes, right? I don't want people just to listen the week that it comes out and then never again. These have ongoing value and I want you as the listeners to be able to find these and know what value I am sharing in the past so then you can listen to it now. And so this training is perfect for anyone who has about five episodes. So they're newer, but still like about a month in maybe. And then the episodes are starting to like rack up to anyone who has hundreds of episodes, right? I interviewed a lady on my podcast who used to publish one podcast episode a day, five days a week. Can you imagine that? Her name is Sarah K. Ramsey. She is the host of the Toxic Person Proof podcast. And it's a great podcast. And so she has so many episodes, right? Literally, I think she's like 300, 400 episodes in. And so this is why you need to know how to repurpose it strategically. So again, this is a live that I did previously on my Instagram. If you ever want to know when I'm doing these lives so you can join live and engage with me, come over to Instagram. It's Espresso Podcast Production. Let's get right into this episode. Hello. Welcome back to another espresso training. I am very excited to be here today to talk about a topic that I get asked a lot about. So this is how to repurpose your old podcast episodes. This is something that I get questions about literally all the time because as podcasters, as content creators, you are creating so much content. And if you're not repurposing it, if you're not using it to your advantage, it's really not going to work in your favor. And so my goal today is to give you a couple tips on how you can actually repurpose these past podcast episodes. So this is perfect for anyone who has anywhere from five podcast episodes, right? They're like maybe a month in, or they are hundreds of episodes in. I personally am on episode 76, I believe. And so things like this, where there's so many episodes, there's so much content, there's so much that I've created, and all of the episodes I've done so far have so much value. The people I've interviewed, the solo episodes I've done, all of it, so much value. And so it's really a lost cause if no one listens to it, right? If no one watches it on YouTube, no one, basically, if no one knows about it, it's really a waste of not time because people will find it later on. 
through different ways, like maybe keywords, maybe you're really good at SEO. And so before I start, this is another reason why SEO is so important for your podcast titles, right? You don't want to just call your podcast like episode six or episode 20 with whatever their name is, or you really want to make sure that you're titling the episodes in a way where someone, you know, you might use one of these five tips that I'm about to share with you. And then you have people coming to your podcast for the certain episode you're promoting. Then they love it. And then they're like, oh, let me see what else she has. Let me see what other episodes are out here that I can also listen to. So let's get right into the tips I have for how to promote your past podcast episodes. And if you have any questions along the way, send me a message. I am always here to answer. I love talking about podcasting. I love doing all the things in the podcast world. So very, very eager to help all of you either start your podcast, that's what I love doing, or grow your podcast. So working together with the production side, but also taking it the next step to where I help you really with the strategies to grow it. So if you're a business coach, if you are a, you know, service provider, if you sell a product, I love working with anyone who wants to make money from their podcast and are using it as a key marketing strategy because podcasting is the best marketing strategy, in my opinion. People can listen to you. People can get to know you. It is truly, truly such a good way to connect with a new audience. So let's get right into how to promote your podcast episodes from the past. So one of the ways that you can do this is, like I mentioned, through SEO. SEO is very important, search engine optimization. So like I mentioned, with the podcast episodes, you're going to want to title them in a way that really will appeal to anyone who comes across your podcast. And the other side of things, you want your show notes to also be SEO optimized. That way, people can find it through keywords like that. And so when you're writing your show notes, keep this in mind. I write show notes for my clients and I make sure that the SEO is there and people will be able to find it and listen to it. And really just like the searchability is the most important part, right? So you can repurpose these into blog posts. You just take your show notes For me and my clients, I write like a really good description of what the episode is. So I usually start this kind of like an extra hack in here where I start it with what the episode's about. So like in this episode, I speak with da 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 about maybe like three to five points and then I put their bio in there. And then I will write a little bit more about like my experience of listening to the episode or what I think people will take away. And then I usually end it with the action steps. So if you've ever listened to my podcast, you know that every episode ends with me challenging the guest to challenge you through three steps that you can start with today to move forward in your life, your business, whatever it may be. So I write those. And then at the very end, I put where you can find the guest, and then where you can find me. So that right there is basically a blog post. And then you can just put it on your website. You can put it, you know, this is obviously best if you do have a website. But it's also great for when you're writing captions, because you already did all that work with the show notes, you can obviously just copy and paste, change it around a little bit for social media. But makes it a lot easier when it comes to blog posts. And this is also a way, like I said, SEO, people will find it. So they can find it through the podcast platforms, but they can also find it in a written version and you will direct them to your podcast. So that's kind of like an ongoing way to repurpose your podcast and promote those past episodes with the help of SEO. Now, the next one that I want to share with you is cutting down your 
podcast episodes, so like 30 minutes, an hour, cutting them down into about five to 10 video clips. Because we all know this, the more visible you are online, the more content you create, the more people are going to see you. So cutting down your episode from long form to short form. And so pull the best parts. And then post that on TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts. There's so many places that you can post these. And the great thing is, if you're posting on all three of those, TikTok, YouTube, Shorts, and Instagram Reels, and Facebook, like there's so many different places to use these. You will be able to not only capture more of an audience, but also push more content out. So instead of just putting out one episode for... 30 minutes, an hour, like I said, you will be able to create, you'll be able to quadruple that, right? So if you start with, you know, two pieces of content, you start with the audio and the video, and you put that on the podcast platforms and YouTube, okay, that's two. And then let's say you have four episodes a month, and then you're creating 10 extra pieces of content from there. That's an extra 40 posts for you, plus the two long form ones. And I'm not great at math, but that is a lot of content that will get you showing off more. That's a lot of content that will get you in front of more people's eyes. And so that is a 100% bulletproof way to promote your past podcast episodes. Now, with this, Because you might be like, okay, I'm going to have 10 pieces of content per episode. How am I going to promote my past episodes? So, great question. And this is what my hack is for this. One time a week. Okay, so you'll promote the current episode that week. You're going to pick one day and you're going to pick one past podcast episode. You know, maybe a lower performing one or a higher performing one, whatever it may be, something that you want to direct people to. And then you do that for that day. So you post on your stories, you can make a post about it, post it on LinkedIn, post some of those video clips that you'll, you know, you can always maybe save one for later or repost it. Depending on how well it performs, people repost content all the time. And so that is a great way. And it's just one day a week right? And so one day, let's say it's like a Wednesday, you want to promote an episode from six months ago, that is the day to do it. And I do see a lot of results from that. I have a client who is actually on a hiatus right now and her podcast is coming out in just like a week or two. And she does this during her off season. So she will be posting about all the past episodes. And I just went in there and checked how many downloads she's having just because I do um, a lot of sponsorship work for her. So like I help her find the sponsorships and I kind of manage that side. And so I'm always updating her media kit and she gets thousands of views every day and hasn't posted since the end of May and it's August right now. And it's because she's redirecting them. And so it is a foolproof plan to get more people onto the eyes of your podcast. Now, if the one day a week thing is kind of confusing to you and you're like, how do I start with this? Bring up the past episodes, maybe in other podcast episodes. Okay, so like, for instance, I just went to a networking event and we were talking about all these different things. And every time something would be brought up and I would be like, oh, that reminds me of this episode that I did with da 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 about this, it was great. And what I learned from that is this. And so you can bring it up in other conversations. I will also sometimes do this in other podcast episodes where maybe a guest says something and I'm like, oh my gosh, that reminds me so much of this takeaway from this guest and kind of like grow from there. So I'm not taking the the star, the spotlight away from the current guest. I'm just pointing the listeners to another place where they can listen to a similar concept or a concept in a different way. It's really cool. It's really cool when you have so many people on your podcast talking about similar things. So for me, business, 
but they think about it in different ways. And I think that it's really just like this big connectivity that is so, so awesome and so exciting. And then the other thing you can do, you know, other than bring it up in the conversation, you can also bring it up when relevant. Like I interviewed a love coach on my podcast. So you bet I will be promoting that all around Valentine's Day, probably around the holidays. Anytime that something connects, like when I'm just trying to think of like beginning of summer, right? Or end of summer. So maybe we're going into like a cozy season. I'm already wearing a sweater. Seattle is crazy right now. So I will pull up episodes of like maybe working when the sun's not shining as much. And then like I've had conversations with people like mindset coaches about these things where our productivity might slow down in the winter. So like, how do we keep that up? And so those are types of conversations I will have and bring it back to that past podcast episode. It's also great in my marketing because if I'm, you know, trying to really drive a point, like you need to start your podcast at the beginning of the year so then you can have it, you know, through all the seasons, whatever it may be. That's just like, (laughs) I don't think I've ever like used that specifically, but something like that, I can be like, and I'm not the only one that thinks this. This is really like a showcase of why you should be starting your podcast in February rather than March. Okay, random things like that where I can drive home the point with other relevant podcast episodes. That is the greatest thing about being in business for so long. You have kind of like a reference to everything. So that's a great way to point back to some other episodes. And then my last tip for you is, this is one of my favorite ones as an editor. So like if you are not an editor, this might not be as fun for you, but you can always outsource. You can always DM me. I'm taking on clients right now. And what I would do and what I really recommend is kind of creating a roundup episode at the end of the year. So you can say something like, these are my 10 top listen to episodes and here's why. And then you could say like, okay, back to the love coach. I interviewed Natalia, the epic love coach on why entrepreneurs have such a hard time balancing love and business or something like, you know. And then you could say, you can pull a little part of her episode, just like a quick thing that will like, a quote that she said that will just drive it home, and then do that for the next 10. So you give it an intro, maybe pull like a 30 second to two minute clip from the episode, plug it in there, go to the next. And it is so fun for your listeners to kind of recap what they've listened to throughout the year, because just as you might not be talking about the past episodes if it's not resonating with them or maybe like something it's not like their favorite episode they might forget about it and so then they might listen back and it might resonate with them differently now listening to it a second time around than the first time around when they listened so creating a roundup episode is super fun and a great way to repurpose your content so just a little recap Number one, blog posts. Number two, cutting down your long form video to short video clips to promote all over social media. Number three, picking one day a week to promote a past podcast episode. Number four, bringing up past podcast episodes in other podcast conversations or in-person conversations and maybe around holidays when relevant or whenever the topic comes up, like I was saying in my marketing, whenever I want to really drive a point, I will definitely be sure to pull that episode as reference. And then number five, creating a roundup episode at the end of the year to highlight your top podcast episodes and it just really brings a lot of excitement. So those are my five tips. If you have any questions, if you have any feedback for me, I would love to connect with you and talk a little bit about how you can promote your episodes because I know it is hard, especially when 
you're posting four times a month or like however many you're posting of your podcast. It can be hard to keep up and make sure that like everything is getting the recognition that it deserves and that more importantly, it's working for you. So your podcast should always be working for you. You're not putting out random episodes for no reason, right? And if you are, let's connect and I can kind of help you with that. But you're going to really want to make your podcast work in your favor. So that is what I'll leave you with today. I am going to go live again next week with another topic. If you have any requests, please let me know. But this has been really fun and I cannot wait to connect with you. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Employee to Boss podcast. If you made it to the end of this episode, I hope that you implement the actionable steps from this week's experts so you can get started Thank with your business Thank you for listening to the today. Employee to Boss podcast. Please rate, review, if you made it and to the end of this episode, the Employee to Boss podcast I hope that you implement the actionable podcasts, steps from Spotify, this week's experts YouTube, or so you can get started you with your, your business podcast. today. Please it rate more than you can ever subscribe to the employee. Remember, a little progress each day leads Spotify, to big results. YouTube or wherever you listen, we come out with a new podcast. episode every Tuesday. It helps more to than you could our ever show imagine. notes, transcripts, Remember, and courses. a little progress each check day out leads to big results.com. We come out with a new episode every Tuesday. To access our show notes, transcripts, and courses, please check out espressopodcastproduction.com.